Hey, welcome back to the news. Today is February 20th, 2018. I haven't done the news in like a month. I did record one a few weeks back, so let's just pop this into this news and I'll be back in a sec. Hey, welcome to the show. Today is January 30th, 2018. In this week's news, I have um, a product that you don't... I basically, I haven't found a website for it. I did ask the guy selling it if he had a website. I've talked to him about him before on the Buying Rare uh, films nowadays, and his name's Kumar. He's in Japan, and he's uh, kind of enabling uh, people to buy certain products that are not easy um, to find in other parts of the world. And he is distributing from Japan. So this time is something I found pretty interesting. It's called um, a lens cell protector. And what this is are their rubber um, little screws or rubber like caps or cell protectors meant to screw onto your large format shutters when you want to service them. Or maybe you have an extra shutter you don't want to have a lens for. You just have the shutter, something like that. You can screw these um, little rubber caps on it and uh, send it to service, store it, or whatever you want. I left the link to his uh, album on Google Photos. Also last week, uh, there was a huge update that just came out when I had already recorded the news. And it's Ferrania's update. They've been talking about their problems with production of the P30 black and white um, film. They've been producing it in 35 millimeters or 135. And the problem is there's a bottleneck at the from cutting, you know, the, the giant uh, roll to the smaller pancake rolls and then cutting those into 35 little canisters. So to enable that, they have a machine, but they haven't been able to set it up. So they said it's much easier for them to set up a 120 machine. So the big news is they're coming with uh, P30 and 120 uh, during 2018 and uh, that will help them produce as much 120 as they want, keep up with demand and meanwhile figure out the P30 uh, machines. The problem with Ferrania as we all know is they've been going overcoming so many problems and they're still there, they're still working and uh, the fact that they can enable 120 to come out of the factory at a good pace means sales will support the project to keep on producing the P30 and 135 and other products like the slide film which is what they initially wanted to start with. So yeah, I highly recommend you read it up um, if you were a backer or not, you're interested in Ferrania. That is a good update and good news from them beginning uh, 2018. Also last week I mentioned Fuji discontinuing uh, some black and white paper. The whole article was in Japanese and I wasn't sure what it meant even though uh, Google Translate did a bit of the work. But thankfully a viewer uh, saw it and actually wrote me an email very nicely saying that they're only discontinuing the paper I commented which was uh, WB3 or something like that. And they will continue to be making the three kinds of black and white papers. So for those in Japan or exporting it, importing it, if you're somewhere else in the world you can still find Fuji paper uh, being made as of now. Also at that same time I talked about Nu55 uh, being uh, closed at the moment and uh, the famous format website coming from Sam Heiser. Um, they've just announced the mono bath that I was talking about. It's um, let's say a, a, like an evolution of their mono bath R3 then R5 now it's going to be monobath number one and uh, the biggest um, gain is that you can develop it at room temperature between 20 to 21 degrees celsius and um, supposedly it works really well. They're right now mixing it and selling it in the US if you want to buy anywhere else, the, anywhere else in the world they will be shipping anywhere so if you're willing to try monobath you got the link below. Now we move into large format. We have uh, the Woody Man Mark II. If you don't remember the Woody Man, it's a large format camera, 8x10, based in France, I think Paris, if I'm not wrong. And they did a Kickstarter-ish um, crowdfunding campaign that didn't wasn't successful, but they continued with the project. They continued uh, evolving their product, and now they're into Mark II. So good to see that. If you're interested in it, I left the link to their Facebook page, which is where they're most active. And you can check an 8x10 or affordable 8x10 from Moody Man. 
Also in the 8x10 department we have Stenopeka in Italy <clears throat> coming out with a new 8x10 camera which is the 810SE2 folding camera. And what is interesting from this camera is that it's basically an 8x10 folding camera which would be considered a field camera but the movements are those of our monorail or a technical camera. So you've got pretty much all the movements you want in the front standard, all the movements you want in the back standard and it folds and would fit into a normal 8x10 backpack. So he also came out with a 4x5, so I recommend you check it out. He's got a few videos on his YouTube um, page that are linked from his website, and um, they look pretty good. The camera's bulky, of course, because of all those movements, but if you want a field-ish camera that you can move everywhere you want for architecture or similar, uh, it looks like a good option. Also from large format, we have Intrepid, which hasn't done any updates on their website or their Kickstarter, but they have released a video of their film holders being produced. Not the whole film holder, but some of it. Um, when I went there and I did the, the recordings, the, they had no film holders in stock. They were not doing anything with the film holders, so I didn't get to record any of that. So I'm glad to see that Max and the team are recording um, some of their procedures and showing the public how they're doing these large format um, 8x10 film holders. Okay, so in this week's news, we have Adox new building um, is coming um, closer to an end. They've done the walls and the ceiling, put the windows in, and they're going to start pouring concrete. I know these are not big news, but I know that uh, a new facility for film in 2018 is great news. So I'm happily sharing this with you guys. Also from Adox, we have Adox Stop Echo, which is a new um, stop bath, which is made uh, more ecological. So it doesn't have any acetic acid. It's done with basically kind of like a lemon juice kind of um, acid. And this stop bath is more eco-friendly to recycle and to make. And um, it's being made in a new plant that they're going to start making all the chemicals for Adox. A few weeks back, uh, there was a video made by Big Head Tackle, who has a YouTube channel all about film and digital cameras. And it's called Film is Still Alive. It's a very interesting documentary where he travels not only to Toronto and uh, in Canada, which is where he's from, to Hong Kong to talk to different people. Uh, this is supposed to be part of a trilogy. There'll be... Uh, film is still alive, then there'll be the photographer, and I think film. Um, I would have to look it up again, but it's very interesting. I left the link below to the documentary and to his channel because it's not on his channel, um, which I think is very interesting to see a uh, film documentary in 2018. From that documentary, we managed to see uh, the first leak of the new Mint in Instacon RF70. Um, this was not supposed to be leaked so early and the Instacon is basically a rangefinder camera that kind of looks like a Fuji GF670 but it will shoot Instax film. They, you have to subscribe to Mint to be able to read anything about the camera. It's not going to be a Kickstarter. It's going to be, as I'm saying, like a GF670. Uh, you shoot uh, with a shutter. And when you advance the film, which there's no advance, it will automatically eject the film. So if you want to do multiple exposures, you can keep on clicking the shutter. Uh, but it's a brand new uh, rangefinder Instax camera with manual aperture. Uh, it has um, focusing and I think speed you can choose yourself, which is what a lot of people have been asking for. So very happy to hear that Mint is coming out with this new product and will keep you guys updated. Also in the Kickstarter, I gave hints before it came out. Now Chroma is the new affordable 4x5. It's made out of acrylic. It's cut by lasers and you can get different colors. Their Kickstarter is already, I think, in the 30,000 pounds, which is very successful. So if you're interested, you can check it out. It's, well, I guess, an alternative to Intrepid or the Italian camera or other cameras that are in that price level. I think the price is around 300 pounds. So if you're interested in a different 4x5 in the budget side, you can check it out. Also some news coming from FPP, which is the Film Photography Podcast. They have a store where they sell film. I actually bought some film this Christmas because they were the only ones and had the best price for Portra 4x5. Uh, they came out with some new hand-rolled film. It comes with DDX code. 
it's Orwo in 100 ISO, Orwo in 400 ISO, and the 200 is FOMA 200. Um, be careful because the rolls are 24 exposures. Don't know why, I guess maybe they could only get DX code for 24 exposures. But if you're interested in trying different films that are usually not available in the market, FOMA is, but Orwo is a little harder to find. Um, they're hand rolled and you support the FPP, which I think is very important. Also news from Alpa, we have uh, new tripods, which are more focused for the large format or ultra large format shooter. I think they uh, support up to 65 kilos. The price range is up there with the Gitzo uh, high-end tripods. And they also came out with a new tripod head, which is kind of like um, a ball head that can be assembled uh, upside down or the right side up to use as a panoramic head or just as a ball head. So if you're interested in upgrading your tripod and you like Alpa products, it's probably gonna be the most accessible product you can get from them. Also those from Lomography that supported the Instant Square, they've been shipping and it's already available in their store. So you were waiting for the real product to be out there. There's a few YouTubers have been doing reviews. I haven't linked the reviews below, but you can search yourself easily but you can buy it for a little less than 300 euros or $300. You get um, Instax uh, Square format, more control camera than the Instax Square. So yeah, the Instax Square is actually kind of a digital hybrid film. So if you want to have an all analog uh, film only camera, you have to get the Lomo Instant Square. Also from Intrepid, we have an update on their 8x10. They've had some issues with some of the parts for their film holders, but now they're fully stocked. I know for a fact that Max and the team is working round the clock because he doesn't even answer my emails or my uh, messages for something we're trying to do together. Um, so yeah, they're really busy building those film holders. They already shipped a few batches of cameras and film holders together, so just check out the update if you have a number that you're curious when it's coming. Also from Silbera, which didn't, I think, uh, fulfill their a whole uh, Indiegogo campaign, but they're still giving the rewards. They're shipping them already. They've opened a shop so you can buy their film, chemistry, paper, and such. Um, they've also announced a DDX code sticker, which is a metallic, and you can put stickers so you can do your own uh, ISO if you're hand rolling your film and you want to use it on a point and shoot that won't have anything but DD, uh, DX code. So yeah, it's very interesting. I couldn't find a link for the DX, maybe on their Instagram or Facebook, but on their website or shop, it's not there. So keep your eyes open for that. Also from the film processing machines, kind of like Jobo, there's Phototherm which has finally stopped doing any repairs and maintenance on their machines. Um, this was read on CAD Labs, which is a great resource for news. And Phototherm made the Sidekick, which was kind of like a Jobo, but a different brand. And it worked pretty well. So if you have one, uh, treat it with a lot of love because you might not get any spares from now on. And today I actually read, well yesterday, I actually read uh, Stenopeka came out with a budget uh, 4x5 called the Hyper Camera. It's a 4x5. Uh, affordable camera. It starts at 297 euros without taxes and it weighs 1.3 kilos and there'll be more details on a video I'll link below from Stenopeka. But if you want a budget 4x5 and you're not friendly with the Intrepid or with the Italian camera or other cameras, uh, Stenopeka is jumping into that budget 4x5. So that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next week. As always, send an email if you have any news to the email below.